Let's make history. The father of Brooklyn Heights, I would say is Hezekiah Beers Pierpont. He began to buy the surrounding properties and he took over the gin distillery and relaunched it. And it did well. He took, took the profit from that and invested in more real estate. And he had a vision. You know, you could buy a mansion overlooking, you know, New York Harbor. But he had some competition because on the northern end of the neighborhood was the Hicks family or the Middaw family. And uh, they were basically hands-on kind of blue collar uh, craftsmen. Uh, uh, they were Dutch. And they wanted to, they had a different vision for Brooklyn Heights. So they made an agreement and basically everything north of Clark Street, the Hicks family would get to do how they wished south of Clark Street would be for Pierre Pond. Eventually though, he went over and it engulfed the northern end and you would walk by, you would walk in the neighborhood of Brooklyn Heights and you would see Orange Street, Pineapple Street, Cranberry Street. And the story behind that varies. Uh, and there's two versions. It would say that one of the Middaws from the Hicks family or Middaw family, she felt animosity towards some of the aristocratic residents that some of the streets were named after on their property. So she would take, <laughs> late at night, she would go take a piece of paper and write on it something else and put it over their name. She just happened to choose fruit. It would eventually get taken down. So legend has it that uh, one day she did it and they left it as is. And that's how those streets got their names. It even says this on a sign in what they call Fruit Park. And there's streets named after them also. The other story is that it was simply a way for the Hicks to market that territory and attempt to lure people in. You know, you do things to dress it up. Like I live on Pineapple Street. I live on Cranberry Street. Plymouth Church, which the building is still there to this day, was known as the Grand Central Station of the Underground Railroad because so many runaway slaves passed through there. Its pastor was famous for he would use humor and slang. He was a major leader in the abolitionist movement. At the turn of the 20th century, not long after the Brooklyn Bridge was erected, then the subways opened up to this wide and the accessibility to Brooklyn Heights. And it brought with it a more of a working class artists, writers began to move in. Huge hotels were built, one still exists which is the St. George Hotel. It's uh, right above the train stop of Clark Street. Then in the mid 1900s, when city planner Robert Moses was in the process of building the BQE, that made matters worse because the original plans, he was gonna put it directly through the heart of Brooklyn Heights. At this same time, you had what they call the Brownstone Revival where more and more people were buying property in an effort to bring the neighborhood back to its original character. And so they were taking a stance against urbanization. So there was a lot of major lobbying going on to prevent this from happening. And one agreement they made was Robert Moses agreed to build a BQE on the outer western edge, to hug the, hug the western edge of Brooklyn Heights rather than go through the through its core. It's still an upscale district. 